Welcome back to In Need of a Refill, where God's Word and the coffee are never in short supply. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. If you have a comment or a question or a passage you want me to look at, leave in the section below. We'll get to it just as fast as we can. Imagine this. You are in captivity. You have been there for quite a while. And you remember that God has said, after so many years, you're going to be released. You're going to be brought home to a place that you haven't seen in many, many years. Or possibly never even see. This is the situation that the prophet Daniel is in. Now, as we get started today, let me go ahead and give you a couple of dates, okay, uh, to help to set the scene to understand the dire straits that Daniel is in, in in many ways. He is in Babylon. Okay, the, the deportation to Babylon happened in three waves. The first one is in 606 B.C. Uh, now, this is uh, from the royal families, from the nobles. Uh, this appears to be where Daniel is uh, taken to Babylon in this particular case. Okay, uh, In 596, you've got the second deportation into Babylon, and then ultimately you've got 586 B.C. where Jerusalem is destroyed and the people are basically shipped off to Babylon uh, not to see home for many, many, many years. 70 years, okay? Well, in 536 B.C., you've got what's called the Edict of Cyrus that is issued, allowing the Jews to return to Jerusalem, okay? So this is 70 years like God had promised through Jeremiah. And well, here's what Ezra records for us about this particular incident and this particular edict that Cyrus issues. This is Ezra chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. Every survivor at whatever place he may live, let the men of that place support him with silver and gold, with goods and cattle, together with a free will offering for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. So Daniel had been in Babylon since 606, and 70 years later, this edict was issued by Cyrus. We don't know if Daniel was one of the ones uh, that went back to Jerusalem or if he died in Babylon. I do not recall seeing his name in the list of the people who went back to Jerusalem. So I think he actually stayed and died in Babylon. But before this was going on, Daniel prays this prayer in Daniel chapter 9, verses 4 through 6. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed and said, Alas, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned, committed iniquity, acted wickedly and rebelled, even turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. 
Moreover, we have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. So Daniel says, Lord, you keep your covenant, you keep your chesed, your covenant faithfulness, your loving kindness is how the NAS uh, translates it. The ones who broke it, well, that, that was us, okay? That was us. You kept your side. Well, see, Daniel was a youth. How old? We, we don't know. We've got a few guesses, but he was a youth when he was carried away in this first deportation, okay? See uh, Daniel chapter 1, 3 through 4. But he says, we have sinned, committed iniquity and rebelled. We. He includes himself in this. Now, was he guilty of some of the sins that sent Judah into Babylon? Perhaps. Was he simply using the corporate we? We, uh, the people? Perhaps. There's no way to know for certain. Uh, and there's good evidence for both. But he says... We have not listened to the prophets that you sent. Whether he is guilty of this or not, he certainly includes himself as being guilty of this. We have not listened. So let's take a look at some more of this chapter. We're going to consider Daniel 9, 7 through 14. Righteousness belongs to you, O Lord, but to us, open shame, as it is this day, to the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel, those who are nearby, and those who are far away, in all the countries to which you have driven them, because of their unfaithful deeds which they have committed against you. Open shame belongs to us, O Lord. To our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong compassion and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. Nor have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his teachings, which he set before us through his servants, the prophets. Indeed, all Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, not obeying your voice. So the curse has been poured out on us, along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God. For we have sinned against him. Thus he has confirmed his words, which he had spoken against us, and against our rulers, who ruled us, to bring on us great calamity, for under the whole heaven there has not been done anything like what has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come on us. Yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our iniquity and giving attention to your truth. Therefore the Lord has kept the calamity in store and brought it on us, for the Lord our God is righteous with respect to all his deeds which he has done. But we have not obeyed his voice. Righteousness belongs to you, O God. Notice in all of this, Daniel is not whining. He is not saying, Lord, this is not fair. We don't deserve this. This is too much. He, he says, we did this. Open shame belongs to us. And we deserve this open shame because of what we've done. How many times today have we been willing to actually admit our part in failing to do what God has told us to do in failing to keep his commands. Daniel notes compassion 
and forgiveness belong to the Lord. It's his decision whether to give it to those that have rebelled. Now, thankfully, God is a gracious and merciful God. But it is still his decision. Daniel notes, we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. We did not walk in the teachings that he has set before us. Now, if I did not tell you that this was from Daniel, would you have guessed that, th that this was not about the American people today? Would you have guessed that this was not about the church today? Would you have thought, oh, this has got to be the church? This wasn't at least not in this case, this was 500 plus years before Jesus came on the scene. Daniel notes, you told us what would happen if we chose not to obey. God was straight up giving them the rules of the covenant in Deuteronomy, and he told them, you obey your side of the covenant, you're going to be blessed in this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. But if you choose to rebel and turn away all these things, well, you might as well flip them on their head because that's what's going to happen. All these things are going to be taken away from you. Daniel says, our calamity, it's deserved. We did this. It's our fault. We should have listened. But let's continue reading verses 15 through 19. And now, O Lord our God, who have brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have made a name for yourself as it is this day, we have sinned and we have been wicked. O Lord, in accordance with all your righteous acts, let now your anger and your wrath turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, for because of our sins and the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach to all those around us. So that now, our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his supplications. And for your sake, O Lord, let your face shine on your desolate sanctuary. O my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations in the city which is called by your name. For we are not presenting our supplications before you on account of any merits of our own, but on account of your great compassion. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and take action for your own sake. O my God, do not delay because your city and your people are called by your name. You have delivered your people from slavery. Yet, we have acted wickedly. God had already delivered the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery. He's proven how strong he is. He's proven how good he is. He's shown his holiness. And yet, the people acted wickedly. But Daniel then goes on to say, let now your anger and your wrath turn away from your city, Jerusalem, because we and our fathers have caused your city and your people to become a stain to everyone around us. That's what that is. Daniel says, we have stained your name by our deeds, by our wickedness, by our rebellion. Please, let your face shine on your desolate sanctuary. He goes on, O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and take action for your own sake. O oh my God, do not delay because your city and your people are called by your name. 
do this for your name's sake, not ours. We don't deserve it. Your name's sake, bring glory to yourself. So as we get ready to close today, I have a few questions for us that will hopefully help us to consider our walk with God and improve it. When we're in trouble, do we take the time to recognize our own part in the situation? Sometimes the trouble that we're in, we have caused. Sometimes life happens, okay? But sometimes we have caused it and we deserve it. Do we take the time to see what is our fault? Do we own up to what is our fault? We need to. When we have sinned, do we recognize that we are bringing shame on the Lord's name? That right there is brutal. You know, it often comes with a statement like something like, hmm, thought you were a Christian. That stings. That stings deep. In fact, forget stings. That cuts. Okay? We have got to do what he wants us to do. We've got to reflect his glory. We've got to walk in a holy and blameless way. We reflect him to the outside world for the good or for the ill. Let's make it for the good. When we ask for God's forgiveness and sometimes for restoration, is our motive for God's glory or our own? Brethren, our job is to bring glory to God. It's about him. It's always been about him. It's not about us. We are the beneficiaries of his goodness, of his mercies. We need to remember that our restoration and our forgiveness are for his glory. Not for our own glory. Not, ha, I got away with it. No, but so that we can honor our King. Thank you for the time together today. Have a blessed week. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. And remember, if you're in need of a refill on God's Word, all we have to do is take it up off our shelves, spend some time with Him. We won't regret it. Have a blessed week.